You're listening to Shows That Shaped Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. This week's guest is the Olivier and Tony Award-winning playwright Simon Stevens. A mainstay of London's new writing theatre, The Royal Court, where he is now associate playwright, Stevens' work with the Sloan Square venue includes Bluebird, Herons, Nuclear War and Birdland. Elsewhere, his critically acclaimed plays include Seawall, which premiered at the Bush in 2008, Heisenberg, which was seen in the West End last year, and a new adaptation of Breck's The Threepenny Opera, which premiered at the National Theatre in 2016, starring Rory Kinnear and Rosalie Craig. He's perhaps most well known for penning the stage adaptation of Mark Haddon's best selling novel, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which ran in the West End for over 1,600 performances and on Broadway for almost two years, earning Stephen's major accolades on both sides of the Atlantic. Last year, his new piece with Frantic Assembly's Scott Graham and Underworld's Carl Hyde, Fatherland, premiered at the Manchester International Festival, and it now transfers to the Lyric Hammersmith, running from the 25th of May to the 23rd of June. Here is Simon Stevens. It's very difficult to talk with any kind of objectivity about the most memorable theatre production that I've been involved in, because to a real degree, and this is an analogy I've used a lot, they're slightly akin to my kids, and it's... it's, you know, it's really true that I kind of love them equally and the kind of frustrating, exasperating ones that nobody came to see. You know, the trial of Ubu that bankrupted Hampstead Theatre when Katie Mitchell did it and played to audiences of about 20 in the Midland of, in a late snow in February 2013 was really precious to me. I loved it. You know, nuclear war last year at the Royal Court with audiences of 50 every night. I was massively proud of um, I, I certainly as proud of, of those shows or country music at the Royal Court Theatre upstairs in 2004 as like the big hits and, but, which doesn't mean that I'm not as proud of Curious Incident as I am of the more hipster ones if you, ha- if you put a gun to my head and said choose one Stephen stop trying to wriggle out of it I'd really beg for you to choose two uh, and I would probably ask to choose Sebastian Nubling's production of Three Kingdoms that we made with three theatres, the Lyric Hammersmith, No. 99 from Tallinn, Estonia, and uh, the Kammerspieler München, Munich, and 12 actors from three different countries speaking seven different languages that again and again me and Nubling had to f- and, and Imogen Knight at the Lyric Hammersmith and the guys at No 99 had to be really dogged in the rights to kind of get produ- they get that produced and tenacious in the face of theatres and actors pulling out and we, we did it and we got it produced and it was a hit in Tallinn and a big hit in Munich and then it felt like something of a revolution in London that was really, really thrilling to be part of that was really thrilling Annalise Semper's exquisite set and an amazing company of actors um, and the gesture of what theatre could be being questioned to a whole generation of British theatre artists in 2012, that was thrilling and then the other one which I always talk about just because in many ways it's the polar opposite of that but working with George Perrin uh, from Payne's Plough and Andrew Scott on Seawall which was so small and tender and just the three of us making a show that lasted 25 minutes but seemed to really break a lot of people's hearts. Those two. And if you had to ch- ask me to choose between one of those, I'd run away crying. <laughs> in, um, in 2009, I was on the cusp of working for a Dutch theatre company that I'd never heard of called Tenniel Group Amsterdam. I was going to work with them with Sebastian Nubling and, and write a show which was going to be The Trial of Ubu and I'd never seen their work. The producer, Wouter van Ransbeek, emailed me and said, why don't you, why don't you come and see a show? We've got a show coming to uh, London. It's called The Roman Tragedies and it's six hours, six and a half hours long and it's entirely in Dutch and there's no interval. Uh, and it's Coriolanus and Julius Caesar and Antony and Cleopatra and um, I think you might like it. And I went, I asked my wife if she wanted to go and she looked at me like I was insane. Um, and I went on a Sunday and left kind of two o'clock in the afternoon and came back that night and said to her, I've seen the best theatre I've ever seen in my life. And still thinking about it now, I kind of shake with excitement at how visceral and thrilling 
how massively Shakespearean and kinetic and savage and tender it was. How they released the language by speaking in a second language. Hans Kesting, the actor Hans Kesting, who played Anthony, the week before they arrived in London, had broken his ankle and did the entire performance in a wheelchair with his leg in a full cast. And I, it remains the best bit of act, stage acting I've ever seen. Uh, the funeral speech, where he wheeled himself onto the stage like a broken warrior with Caesar on his lap and addressed the entirety of the Barbican with such compassion and loss and rage. It's still chilling. I think it, that's, it remains the best theatre I've ever seen. So it, it's an interesting question. What's the production you most wish you've seen? The older I get, the more I miss theatre because there's probably a brief period in our life, like our late 20s, early 30s, when you can get out and see five or six shows a week. And the older you get, I think you have to be sanguine about the fact that you're just going to miss things and that that's fine. Uh, and, and sometimes it's your friend's shows um, and, and that's a slightly heartbreaking thing. But actually, I think... Um, uh, I think my, my, my theatrical life is as defined by the shows I didn't see as it is defined by the shows that I saw. I miss Katie Mitchell's Waves, for example, and I'm, in my head, that's astonishing, that show. And it's more astonishing in my imagination than it probably was in real life, because I didn't see it. It's become, it's become epic. Um, I really wish I'd seen Steppenwolf's August Osage County. And I didn't see that. And, uh, and whenever I talk to people about it, you know, their faces kind of melt with love and remembrance. Uh, and probably if I did see it, it would be nowhere nearly as good as it, as, as it is in my imagination. Um, so probably that. I would say August Osage County, Steppenwolf's August Osage County, or Katie Mitchell's The Waves. There's so many people from the, the kind of history of theatre that I, I, I would love to have worked with and won't be able to. There are people living now who I'd love to work with and, and, and might be able to. But the, uh, there's a... I feel a really profound emotional bond with Sarah Kane. She was born two days before me. She was born on the 4th of February 1971. I was born on the 6th of February 1971. Um, she's the only uh, theatre artist I've ever dreamt about who's like come to me in my dreams and kind of saved my life. I think her writing is writing of the highest order. Uh, I know she's a Man United fan. I know she said that David Beckham was the only man she'd ever sleep with, and I possibly agree with her on that. Uh, I think we could have gone to a few United games together. I think we could have spent a bit of time. I think I would have learned an awful lot from her, and I think we would have got on very well. I kind of regret not being able to do that. Thank you for listening to Shows That Shaped Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. If you enjoyed listening, please do subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss a single episode.